I did a lot of albums with Charlie, including the, the sort of um, uh, what ended up being the first Bossa Nova album. He'd been in Brazil on a State Department tour, and he picked up, and his group picked up on this Bossa Nova rhythm, this basically samba, samba jazz rhythm. <clears throat> and they brought it back to the States with them. And they, they said, you know, we should make an album of this stuff. They actually ended up getting Stan Getz, who was playing in town. Now, Stan Getz, he was marvelous. I mean, just marvelous. I like to record uh, legitimate groups, I mean, ensembles and things like that, where you do, you're going for the, basically everything at once in some kind of an acoustic space. And there were several auditoriums that I used to use in D.C. in preference to the studio. Uh, the, the, the kind of um, artificial space now, you want to call them reverbs, uh, were very limited and very difficult to deal with and didn't sound very good. The studio I was in was pretty dry and pretty dead. So I went to a church on Upper 16th Street and recorded an album called Jazz Samba, which is still out today. Uh, that was in 1961, and it was the first Bossa Nova album in this country. It was out for about a year, and then some DJ started playing a theme from it called Desafinado. And, and it's still, to this day, that's 40-something years later. That was in stereo, mixed on a set of headphones. Uh, there was no multi-track. I, I mixed in a hallway, and the producer was a fellow named Creed Taylor. He had, he had no idea what he had when he left, because he couldn't hear. I mean, just sitting in a live hallway with a couple of little suitcase speakers, one of those Ampex speakers. I edited the album right then and there. I put it together, side one, side two, leaders, tones, out the door. And he was kind of scratching his head. We did the album in about three hours, three or four hours, certainly no more than four hours. And I edited the tape for him and away he went.